Okay, <clears throat> hey boys and girls, guess what? This doesn't look like a Ford. Um, I, I don't know what, uh, what the deal is here, but uh, when I started looking underneath this just a few minutes ago, my first comment was, or my first thought was, this doesn't look like a Ford. And, and quite frankly, one of the other guys, Jordan, just said it, the same thing. This doesn't look like a Ford. I, I, this is the kind of excitement I was expecting to see on the, on the VW. So let's go through a couple of the quick hits over here. Uh, maybe we can look over on this side. And what we'll do is we'll talk about these, um, these um, very expensive and very large uh, brakes, okay? These are fixed caliber brakes. They make them a little more expensive. And um, I don't know how they did it, but this is a really tight, they may have had to machine these things to make them fit. It's a really tight fit in there. Um, these are the smallest wheels that they had that they feature this car with um, and uh, maybe there'd be more room for a bigger one but but at the end of the day they fit and that's good enough. Let's go over here. Remember I talked about semi-solid forgings in the last uh, uh, the last video. Um, this one is another semi-solid forging and again if we look back here you can see up into the um, into the uh, into the uh, housing here and you can see that what we're looking at is uh, McPherson struts. So that kind of a situation here is not really dramatic, uh, but really well done. Now, this is gonna be a little harder to see. Where did my, where did my, what do you call it go? Flashlight, here it is. Okay, you wanna swing around on this side. So, this is a little harder to see in here but if you look at this, this cradle part, okay, you're gonna see it goes way over inside. Now, the reason for that is called, is for sorb. So that's a small offset crash that you have to, oops, that you have to pass. And what this'll do, it, we call it a tusk, and a sorb tusk, and what that does is it pushes the car away from whatever's coming at your wheel, this wheel, and that would allow, the, um, allow the, uh, the car to absorb the shock instead of taking the wheel and shoving it inside of the uh, 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 compartment, the, the, the passenger compartment, or smashing into the, uh, into the battery. Okay, so let's have a look at another little doodad that I think is kind of impressive. Okay, so for those who don't know, that's the longitudinal. That goes from one end of the car to the other, and it basically acts like a frame to hold the car uh, up in the air. And you can see that what we normally would see is one bolt here, and that bolt is holding the, uh, the uh, cradle in place. Now, we go over here, might have to spin around on this side. You go over here, and now what we're looking at is, look at this bolt right here, is holding up the motor, and then going through the cradle, and then popping up into the, uh, into the longitudinal. That's a really good idea. That's really good engineering. I'm, like I say, I'm so impressed with the stuff that Ford is putting out on this car. I, I, we're talking right now, we may, we may buy this one and, and tear it apart because if I'm seeing this much good stuff here, there's got to be some brilliant stuff down the road. Okay, so let's move over here and have a look, and have a look at the, uh, the extrusion usage that uh, Ford has come up with. Uh, again, I haven't seen Ford use too many extrusions, but have a look at this, and you can see again that they've got a strategy for crash. And what it is is that great big giant hole and this great big giant bolt. And what that's trying to do is keep any sort of wheel intrusion, so the wheel's over here, any kind of wheel intrusion from that battery. And that's what this is for. This is a clever idea. Also, an extrusion. Over here, you can see that the longitudinals come in and then there's this welded extrusion that's uh, basically used for holding up, the, uh, holding up the, uh, the vehicle on the hoist. And that's a full four inches, which basically is giving you a really strong member. And again, it's, it's got little holes here and there and that's for crush and crash worthiness. So let's look at the engine here, or the motor, I should say a little bit. So this motor is really short compared to the back, and we don't know for sure right now, but our guess is that this is probably an induction motor, 
or a really small PM motor. This has got uh, two motors on it. Um, I haven't driven this yet, but some of the other people that have say it's quick, really quick. So one of the other nice things about this electric motor is, from a drive standpoint is that this is coaxial, which means that um, you're going to get rid of weight, cost, and, uh, and quite frankly, you're going to get a lot more room when you, when you use a coaxial drive like this one has. I, 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 I get excited about the things that, uh, that, that other people don't. I'm really excited about this casting. This, this casting is, um, it has a casting that goes around all four sides, which means that this area right here where my fingers are, that's cored out. And if you look at it, you'll see it has a bottom, two sides, and a top. This is uber strong, which means that I can make this really thin piece of aluminum. This is a really good idea, a really good idea. We've, we know that it's done occasionally, on mostly European cars like BMWs and Porsche and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we don't see this on a Ford very often. Um, the other thing that we were looking at and trying to decide what was going on is we've seen that there's two absorbers here. This, these, uh, these isolators are usually used for vibration. But in looking at it, if you look right here, you'll see that there's a kicker. So what we think is happening is if you get into a front end crash, and it hits the electric motor, then that force will drive this down, drive that kicker forward, and allow this to move up, which will push the electric motor down. This is for crash. Really a clever idea. I'm, like I say, I'm extremely excited about uh, what's going on here and talking probably too fast. But at the end of the day, this is really kind of cool. Okay, see these buttons right here? These are toggle lock. Now, we've been using toggle lock for quite some time um, and in fact the uh, DD55 which was uh, 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 an experimental truck it was 100% 100% using toggle lock. The toggle lock process is great because there's no extra parts. It goes in and, um, and in essence it holds itself in shape. Now the one thing that you do have normally is there's an adhesive in here so that when you bind these two things together, these two plates together, they're going to be rigid and strong like anything. There's no leak paths when you fool around with this stuff. And that was why we, at Ford, when I was working for Ford, we were trying to use this. It was shot down. <laughs> it was shot down by basically people who um, are lousy at, uh, at car design and really didn't want to have anything that was new or different on a, on a pickup truck, but I'll tell you what, this is a really good idea. Toggle lock, I, I'm telling you, I'm, this has got the kind of stuff that I thought I was gonna see in the VW. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign off here and uh, stay tuned because I'm gonna talk to the rear end of the car and I'm even more excited about that.